Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this video I'm going to give you my 7 best tips on taking photography of snow and retouching it in Lightroom Classic with all the new 2022 tools. To go for example from this photo to this photo and if you stay until the end I'm going to show you how I did this photo which is the most crazy ones. I'm going to show you a whole bunch of tips and tricks to erase snow steps, to make your snow very clean, to find the right white balance. My name is Serge Ramani, I'm a French photographer living in the US and I love to teach Lightroom photography in a very fun and easy way. Let's start. Okay, my first tip is use the star system to find your best photo. So after I came back from this amazing night shooting Paris under a snowstorm, uh, you know, I go through my photos like this and, you know, I look for a photo that really has some kind of potential. And when it has some kind of potential, what I do is I give it a one star. So uh, let me see. So, you know, here I just came out of the hotel. It was really, I mean, look at this, you know, like I wanted to be the first Parisian walk-in. We didn't meet anybody for the first two hours. It was so freezing. Look at this, completely snow empty, absolutely gorgeous, right? And so I got close to the Eiffel Tower, look at this. So I was trying to get like a good composition. So I'm definitely gonna give a one star to this one. And then this is the top of the photo. I'm gonna give that a one star. And I think this is the very top. So I did like three pano, boom. I'm gonna show you how to make a pano out of that. I was around the Eiffel Tower and uh, I was looking for, I love this composition with that one light and everything. This is one of my favorite. So I already gave it like a four star. I did lots of panels because I found it was hard to get everything right. So like, you know, like one, two, three, but there was still a lot of snows coming. So sometimes my photos were like very blurry like this one. And then, or look at this, one, two, three, lots of panels. I like this one because we have a lot more light. And so this one, I'm gonna give it a one star, one star, one star. And basically I go through all my photos and I give a one star to the ones which I think has potential. Like um, one, two, three, see it's a lot of pano. So it was always like trying to find some like interesting foreground element and give it just a one star to all of that, okay? So I go through all my photos like this. After the Eiffel Tower, we sort of walked around on the different bridges. It was so incredible. That's a photo of my wife running around. I mean, there was people doing motorbikes. It started getting like early in the morning and then we arrive at the famous Alexander III Bridge, which is like my favorite bridge in Paris. I love that photo. Look at this, you can see the snow here was snowing a lot. Look at all the snow still coming down. The snowstorm was not over, so I'm gonna give a one star to this one. I really like this one. I think I'm gonna give a one star or maybe this one. This one is very original to get the lines like this, one star. It was so cool. I This was one of the best opportunity I ever had. Look at this one. This is a Petit Palais. It's really beautiful, covered in snow. It was amazing. All right, I really like this one. Uh, I'm gonna give it a one star. And I think the last one, uh, there's so many, uh, you know, we were freezing. Look at this one. I think I'm gonna finish with one. Place de la Concorde with one star. So once I've given one star, what I do is I go here, make sure that uh, this is goes to uh, rated. And then let's take all the one star photo. You see out of 170 photos, I have 31 star photo. And then I I can start working on it. Now, tip number two is how to make vertoramas. So let me show you what I mean by vertoramas. So I have one photo here, one photo there, and one photo here. And I did not want to wide angle it. Like I shot this at, uh, what was it? At 35 millimeter, because I find at 35 millimeter, when you take three photos and you select them, you right click, you go to photo merge, panorama, you get a better photo than one photo with wide angle because the wide angle, what would have happened is that the entire Eiffel Tower would have been distorted. Okay, on this one, I'm gonna go here and check this out. You see, I, I'm missing a little bit of pixel here. So I'm gonna use the fill edge and fill edge is gonna use contour award technology to create all the missing pixel. It's gonna do something weird there, but look at this. It did some pretty nice stuff. It's always useful. Now you've got different ways of stitching the vertorama. And when you shoot at 35 millimeter, I find, and that's really tip number three, is always use perspective when you're shooting like at 35 or 40 millimeter. So perspective, projection, it's gonna respect a lot more. Like you see here on spherical, it's gonna get very bended. Like here, you see it's bended. And if you go to perspective, it's very straight. So I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna merge that. So that's the merge result. You see there's a whole bunch of weird stuff, but I make sure the photo is sharp. I mean, it's sharp, there's a lot of blurriness. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the crop tool. And this one I'm gonna crop for Instagram. So I'm gonna go four by five and uh, here we are. And I wanna make sure I have something like this. Now, I'm not gonna go four by five. I'm gonna go 16 by nine. Yeah, 16 by nine, which is like the iPhone. So I wanna make sure I get the full Eiffel Tower completely. Maybe make it a bit smaller, something like this. And that's gonna be perfect as a, as a, yeah, look at this. Look at the resolution because I shot a vertorama, 9,262. It's really cool. 
So now, once that I have this, how to find the white balance? Now, when there is no, what I always do is I take the white balance lighter, and that's my next tip, how to find the right white balance, is you pick the snow, and it's gonna take out all the colors. Now, this was shot during the night, and night is usually cold, and believe me, it was freezing. So I'm gonna use that, but then I'm gonna add back some of the blue a little bit here, and a little bit some of the magenta, because I don't know, I think magenta adds a little bit of magic. Maybe like this, maybe not like this, yeah. Yeah, it's too much magenta, just a little bit like this, yeah. White balance is tricky because you really have to find what you're going for, but I kind of like that. I'm not really happy with the crop. I think I think it's too narrow. So you know what, I'm gonna go here to make the crop that I want. I wanna bring back a little bit more here, a little bit more there, and I don't really care because I'm gonna do this for internet, so I don't really care to respect. Just make sure you don't get all this content that word feel weirdness here. Yeah, that's better, I like that a little more. And now I'm ready to do my retouching. So on this one, I'm just gonna open up shadows, bring on the highlights, and then I'm gonna do my black point. Now black point, what's very important is you hold on the option key on your keyboard or the alt key on Windows and you search for the black point, something like this. Voila. So on the white point, you can hold on the option key. You wanna make sure you don't have any snow that's burned because snow can burn really fast. And then I add a bit of contrast. So I kind of like what I, what I got there. And now I am ready to make the colors a little more the way I want it. So the first thing that I usually do is I go here and I go to camera matching. You should have that. Camera matching. These are profile which are based on your camera. And I like to, when it's snow, I like to go to either neutral or landscape. So neutral is going to make it like more neutral, which I kind of like. So I'm going to take that. And then color refinement, you go to you and you click this little tool here. And what you can do is you click on the snow. If you go up, it becomes very magenta. If you go down, it's become very blue. Basically, I just play around until I have something that I kind of like. Yeah, it's something like that. It's kind of killing the magenta, but look at the difference. I love it. If you want to see the difference with what you did here, you can just go here and go before, after. You see, it's much more blue, but that blue you won't be able to get with the white balance. Now, I really like what I did. Now I want to add a little more haze to this to this photo and the haze is really around the Eiffel Tower. By the way guys, I've got a really cool live workshop. If you watch it, you can get a free copy of my Lightroom book 2022. It's the best book I ever wrote about Lightroom. You can get it for free if you watch the workshop that goes with it. Link is under the video. So for that, and that's my next tip is how to add A's. You go here, you add, um, you select the sky using the new feature. So the sky is selected, you see it selected the sky, not the bottom, but that's fine. We're gonna help this. The haze is supposed to take out a haze. I'm gonna add A's. I'm gonna add A's like this, but you see it might do something weird on the Eiffel Tower. So you wanna make sure you add a brush. Make sure the brush is kind of small. Flow and density pretty high, like in the 90s. And then I'm just going to brush the haze value that we did on the Eiffel Tower on the tree. I want to do it over the lights here, somewhere here like this. And I'm going to try not to do it so much on the tree. Well, I really want to make this go and check it out before, after. I'm just adding haze and I'm making on purpose. Maybe I'm going to add a bit more here. It maybe it's a little bit too much. So you can just, now that I've done the mask, I can add just a little, too much. It's going to look weird, but just a little bit might just make it sort of magical, really, really magical. And then at this point, this is when I decide if I want to go for that very sort of high haze look where I can add a, a lot of contrast and crush my blacks even more. But I love having the depth. So this one I really like. This one's going to make a really nice photo. Make it, make it a bit brighter overall like that. Yeah, like that. And voila, so this one, I'm gonna give it a three star because I really like this one. Let me show you another retouching. Uh, I think, let's go to my favorite one. I did a lot of other tests. This is another one I did like kind of similar, but different framing and I did the haze exactly what I did. Let me show you, I think my favorite was this one. So this one, I, I don't know, I just love having this as a four one. So I always start by the exposure. So I'm gonna bring down the highlights because it's too strong. I'm gonna open the shadows. I'm gonna do my black point holding the option key. You want about one or 2% of black points. I'm gonna do so, my white point like that. I don't really care yeah, if that light is burned. And that's when I do the white balance. So white balance, remember the tip is you click on the snow, everything becomes very neutral. And on this one, I kind of like what it did. I don't think, maybe I just wanna go here and then I, I wanna go to camera matching. Maybe just go to landscape to give it a little bit of, uh, it's it's small, landscape is gonna give it, look at the, between faceful and landscape, you can hardly see it, it gives a little more saturation. And then I always go here in the U and take the targeted tool and I click on the snow. If I go up, 
and go down, see what's going to happen. Doesn't do much because it's very neutral. Let's go here. Yeah, I think I want to bring back a little more sort of bluish like that. Okay, and I think I also want to add some haze on this one. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to select. Let's. You can try by selecting background. See what's going to happen. You see this yeah, background selected everything, which is kind of what, not what we want. Let's go to create a new mask and let's go to select the sky. See what it does. Yeah, sky is better. So same thing. You just select the sky. And that's really my next tip is how to combine a sky selection with brush. I also want to add haze to this photo. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to select the sky like we did last time. And then I'm going to start dehazing the sky. Ooh, I like that. And maybe add a bit of blue because the, the, the haze is taking the blue out. Like let's add a bit of blue and let's add a bit of saturation because we're losing a, a bit of that color. So that's the good thing is when you do a mask, you can add saturation blue. You can add a lot of things in the same time. And now on this mask here, I'm going to go add brush. That's the big trick. And then you can just brush so that we have the Eiffel Tower completely in the haze, but just the Eiffel Tower and not the front of the photo. I just want the Eiffel Tower to be like, so you can hardly see that it's there. One of the key thing is you want to make sure the lamp is here. So when you have a brush, you can hold on the option key, make it very small, make it very small like that, and just bring back the lamp. Let me make it bigger. Yeah, you have to be very precise. So one way of doing this is, um, and you see if you have the plus here, plus is going to bring back the haze. And then I want to take it out. When I hold on the Alt key, it's basically taking out the haze. So if I let go the Alt key, I can bring it back. I want to make sure I don't have like a little halo around. But I, I because I really want that lamp to stand out. It's what's going to make the entire photo really stand out is you want the uh, lamp, this beautiful Parisian lamp to not be in a haze. And you can use the middle mouse to make something like that and then you can go back here on this mask decide the level of haze that you want just a little bit of that and then on this one i think i'm going to clean up the snow so i'm going to use this new stem tool here which is using comment award fill to erase some of this this was not even steps this was like kind of stone just to make a little cleaner the uh the foreground okay the content award fill didn't really work so i i think i'm going to do that in photoshop so before i go to photoshop I think my haze is a little too blue. So that's a good thing. You can go back to mask here, take your mask and then just bring down, bring back the blue a little bit. Yeah, it was a little too blue like that. I want a little bit of blue, but not so much. So I'm bringing that down and I think I want to go back here to the journal setting and just I want to crash the blacks even more to give more contrast on the haze. I really like this photo, but I want to clean up here. So I'm going to right click edit go to Photoshop. So I'm here in Photoshop. Make sure if you don't see the same thing to me, you can always go to Windows, Workspace, Essential or Photography. What's important is you have the layers. You All you need is the photo in the layers. So I'm going to show you in this next step how to clean up the snow. Click and drag the background here so it's, it's on a clean background and check this out. I'm going to take the lasso tool, L for lasso tool. I'm going to make sure the feather is about 20 pixels and I'm going to make a really quick selection around my snow, which has all this stone in it. And then I'm going to go to filter, noise, dutch and scratches. And then I'm just going to play around with the radius and you can see in real time what's happening. If I go too far, it's going to take everything, but it's going to look, it's actually kind of cool. I kind of like this look. Let's see. Let's press OK. And then Command D to undo. Yeah, you see it's kind of weird there. It did something weird. So I'm going to undo this and I'm going to make it much lighter. So you go to filter, noise, dust and scratch. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go much lighter, like maybe like 15. So you still have a maybe not so much like yeah, yeah 15, 16. Press OK. Command D to undo. And then I'm going to take, I'm going to finish it off with the spot hitting brush tool just to make it even cleaner where there is a lot. I'm just going to paint over that and it's going to make it a little more clean. It's kind of cool that you leave some stone, not you don't take everything out so it doesn't look like you blurred everything. But check it out before, after. So then I can just save this and it's going to go back into Lightroom. I love this one. I'm going to press four to give a four star to this one. And then I'm going to show you one last. There's so many. I mean, this could, tutorial could go on for hours. But there's one last I want to show you that I really like this one. The Alexander Third Bridge. 
on this one i'm going to uh, give it like a night feeling and turn on the light so i'm going to open the shadows i'm going to bring on the it was like pouring rain again on this one i'm going to crush the blacks the whites i'm going to use the white balance to go here as usual but i'm going to add back a bit of blue and i'm going to make it darker a little bit darker because it was the lights literally just went off like there was a lot of lights and it just went off so i really want to give it like a little dark feeling the photo is kind of not straight so i'm going to go here and i'm going to go to auto i'm going to try something and i'm going to turn these lights on so i'm going to zoom in on the light here you can see look at the snow you can see the snow it was snowing i was protecting my camera and i'm going to give it like a very yellow light so i'm going to go here and i'm going to go to uh, radial gradient make a little gradient make sure the gradient doesn't go over the lamps that's very important you don't want something like this you want it to be inside of the lamp and you don't have to do this i thought it was fun i'm going to add a lot of yellow and a lot of light a lot of exposure the the trick is you right click you duplicate once you did another light you right click you duplicate you right click you duplicate it's very important you will see why in a minute you right click you duplicate and you do that for the entire photo okay when you get to further lights like lights which are really far away uh, what you can do is you can instead of putting like one on every light you can almost do uh, I mean on this one they're still a bit far but you see as I get further and further the lights get smaller and smaller so because it gets smaller and smaller I can literally use this one radial for like three lights just about you know or like this it's just a trick because you know perspective makes things look at this this one circle is going to do like all these lights Okay, because I did just one light, check this out. This is really cool. I can now, you see, when I move my exposure, I turn off and on all the lights at the same time. So I just want them to be a little bit on, not so strong, just something like this. Maybe just a little bit like this, like they were just turned off. Maybe add a little bit of, uh, yeah, a little bit of color like this. Let's see if I add even more saturation. They are very yellow, these this lamps. So maybe just turn down some of the magenta but something like this and a little more exposure. Like they were just about to be turned off. Okay, cool. So now on the rest of the photo, I think I'm gonna make it, yeah, maybe add a bit of more contrast, add a little more blue to give it like a night feeling and maybe crash the blacks even more. And I think I'm gonna go to Photoshop and clean up the snow there like I did before. So I show you again really quick. You right click, you edit Photoshop. Okay, I created a copy and then same thing. I take the lasso tool. L for lasso tool, make sure feather is 20%. And I just wanna clean up a little bit these footsteps. I was hoping to go there before the footsteps, but you know, it was kind of getting late. And then I'm gonna go here into noise, dust and scratch, maybe a little lower value, like 10. And then on this one, I'm gonna show you another tool, which is kind of cool, which is the uh, command D to undo patch tool. It can take a big thing of snow and put it there and it's gonna sort of clean it up. It goes actually faster when you have a lot of things going. I'm just I don't want to take everything out. I'm just trying to make it a little bit more cleaner so that it doesn't look like so many footsteps. You know, look at this before and after. It's really a lot cleaner. Command W to close. I'm going to save it. All right, so I'm back here. Four star, absolutely beautiful. So let's see some of my favorite of, of that night. Let me show you the before and after. So before, after, before, after. And this one is before after crazy one all right i hope you enjoyed this video if you really like lightroom i'm gonna give you my 10 best hacks to use in lightroom you're gonna love them the video is starting right now